Not a lot of people know that there were Russians on the northwest coast of North America. It seems odd to imagine Russians living in North America because of the current unstable relationship with the country today. So, how did Russians come to America? The Russians wanted to expand eastward in the 16th and 17th centuries in the same way Europeans branched out to explore the rest of the world. In 1639, the Russians reached the Pacific Ocean. In the mid-17th century, they sailed through a strait that separates Asia and North America. This would be later known as the Bering Strait. The Russians were actually the first to discover this sea route from the Arctic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. While making their way along North America, they eventually ran into native Alaskans. This would be the beginning of the Russian presence in North America. After they made contact with the first native Alaskans, they noticed an abundance of land and sea animals that they could hunt and kill for their fur pelts. The main animal being hunted is the sea otter. The two explorers on this expedition, St. Peter and St. Paul, brought back reports to Russia about all this fur that could be collected. This is what heavily influenced the Russians to further expand to North America and to establish a presence there. What made fur a sought after resource? Well, the Russians frequently traded with the Chinese since they were neighbors. The Chinese had an incredibly high demand for fur in their country and they were willing to pay good money for it. This made fur trading a very lucrative business for the Russians. Normally, a Russian hunter could sell the fur to a trader for 10 rubles. However, if the Russian hunter sells it to a Chinese merchant, then they could get 75 rubles for the fur. The high profits motivated many Russian hunters to travel to North America to hunt for fur. As more and more furs started to be brought back, more people went over to hunt or sell them. Over time, the sea otter population was being exhausted in Alaska. So, the Russians looked to expand southward down the west coast. Alexander Baranov was said to be the main architect of the Russian southward expansion. In 1803, Baranov sent people southward to find another place to hunt for more fur. In Northern California, the Russians set up Fort Ross. Fort Ross served as the commercial center for the Russian American Company in California from 1812 to 1841. The settlement was considered to be the earliest pluralistic community in North California because of the many ethnicities in the fort. The inhabitants include Europeans, Creoles, Native Alaskans, and Native Californians. The fort was named Ross because that was the term that was coined for the word Russia. So the fort's real name is technically Fort Russia. Many of the people who lived in the fort were Prami Shilenniki. Prami Shilenniki are laborers, handymen, seamen, and hunters. In Fort Ross, the company had a hierarchy system in place. The Russians were at the top and could be manager. The Native Americans, or people of mixed European or Native ancestry, worked under the Russians. They also had other subdivisions of status in that category as well. Their statuses affected how they were paid by the Russian American company. The Russians would sign contracts for salaries, while people like the Native Alaskans got paid by the amount they caught. With an established settlement, the Russian-American company was able to start hunting and selling furs. The area that they were hunting in had a large animal population with fur. By 1880, the Russian-American company was exporting 62,000 pelts each year. This amount of pelts had a market value of $133,200, which doesn't seem like a lot by today's standards, but it was a lot of money during the time period. 80% of the fur pelts that were hunted there in the area were 
fur seals. 5% of the fur pelts that were hunted in the area were from sea otters. These were the two most sought after and valuable fur pelts in the industry. The fort was headed by manager Ivan Kuzkov and had four other successors after him. When he picked the spot for the fort, he happened to pick a spot that was on native Californian land. The native Californians that lived near Fort Ross were called the Kashaya. The Russians actually had fairly good relationships with them. They would often exchange gifts with one another, and some even learned each other's languages. However, the Spanish who were expanding from the north saw the fort as a threat. Fort Ross had very strong fortifications. The fort had 20 feet high walls and blockhouses with cannons. All of these fortifications made the fort seem like a military fort rather than just a settlement. Of course, the Kashaya thought this too, but they rather live around the Russians and actually use the Russians as protection from the Spanish. After all this, you're probably wondering, where did the Russians go? Like many resources that were heavily hunted or used at an accelerated rate, the fur supply became exhausted. Alex Rochev was in charge of the fort at this time, and in 1838, he realized that the Russian-American company could no longer be sustained. So, he decided to sell it and leave. He sold it to another settler in the area named John Sutter in 1841. In 1842, Rochev and 100 other settlers sailed on the last ship back to Sitka, Alaska. After 30 years of operation, the Russian-American company was out of California.